On a freight train leaving town Not knowing where I'm bound And no one can change my mind But Mama tried We are back One and all Special edition, I guess, of the First Look program, if you haven't heard by now. Uh, legend of legends, man. Uh, country music icon Merle Haggard uh, from right uh, here in Bakersfield has passed away on his birthday at the age of 79. And that's a, uh, you just, it's a hole you can't fill up, man. There's just nobody, uh, there's, there aren't any more Merle Haggards, man. Uh, it's too bad. And Buck and Waylon and George Jones and it just, uh, we are, all these people that built this wonderful form of music are gone and. Uh, I guess, uh, well, Willie Nelson's the last of the Mohicans, as it were. I know that uh, Willie had uh, called Merle the night that uh, George Jones died and said, uh, it's it's you and me, Poncho and Lefty. Well, uh, Merle had uh, told some of the people close to him that he wanted the Bakersfield Californian to be the the, the ones to break the news. We had the obituary kind of ready, and uh, we uh, hustled up to get it ready after we received word uh, last night that uh, it might not be very long until... Until the time came, uh, so that uh, that obituary is up on Bakersfield.com right now. It's on the Bakersfield Californians Facebook page, and it's uh, uh, we've we've got the the whole story there. But we will continue to work on it, and you can expect a special section on Merle Haggard coming out soon, possibly Sunday. Well, one one would expect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, keep your eyes peeled to Bakersfield.com for that stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of people, because uh, you know we have some uh, uh, we have some friends in like sort of the uh, team Myrtle circle there who have been really really concerned about this for weeks and weeks now, and uh, uh, you know mentioned that qu- uh, quite frequently. Um, but like as as we said earlier, uh, Myrtle wasn't about to get. This is the only way Myrtle was ever going to quit touring. Uh, and I had pe- I had people uh, like on the. His, his closest uh, inner circle tell me that that he is not going to stop until he dies, and, but that's how he wanted to do it. Uh, it's he Myrtle did everything the Myrtle way, and that's just the way it was, you know. And uh, he uh, ended up with uh, with this environmental encephalitis, which meant he he got uh, uh, pneumonia really really easily, not just from the air or anything, but from food particles from almost anything. And uh, so it's uh, it, it's. Uh, you know, it's kind of a tragedy, and uh, he's, I, I saw Myrtle many, 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 many times and got to hang out with him uh, any number of times, and he was always super nice to me, uh, and I just, uh, it's the almost the end of an era, man. It was totally the end of the era. This guy's story was so phenomenal on so many levels. He wrote so many songs covered by so many artists, not just country artists. Uh, he was uh, this fountain of creativity and uh, emotion and pride and uh, you know, it seems kind of overstated to call him a poet of the people, but you no, know, it really, doesn't. He really, it really absolutely was. doesn't. Read his song lyrics without the music. Uh, that guy was a wor- absolutely a world class poet. He talked about uh, um, you know the demographics, the economics of, of being uh, an Okie, of being uh, you know poor and white, but he, but so many other things, you know, love and love lost and. Uh, um, you know, I think about uh, families struggling to make it, um, and then he would get into he sort of veered which is into what politics. country music is supposed to be. That's what that was the foundation it was built on. Yeah, yeah, is the struggle part of it, and no, but nobody ever, nobody did it better. Yeah, uh, fascinating personal life. You know, he was a little bit embarrassed about his uh, his time. Well, I shouldn't say a little bit. He was embarrassed about his time in, in uh, San Quentin. Didn't want to uh, share that too much early on until the, uh, the day Johnny Cash said. You know what? Live it. That's who you are. Yep. Be there, and it just a, it, it was the right decision, no doubt about it. Yeah. And Merle was able to, uh, you know, writing those songs, people knew that he was it was coming from experience. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will never forget the first time I because I grew up obviously listening to Merle. He was a big deal in our household growing up, man. You had your little transistor radio and all that stuff living out on the farm. And of course, the, back then they had real country music and they played that on the radio a lot. And I knew my parents were big fans and my grandpa was a big fan and all that stuff. And here I am years and years later and I and Ray calls and says, would you like to meet Merle? And I'm like, come on, man, seriously? Um, and so he did. And Merle used to, and this is, uh, I don't think necessarily a secret, ha, uh, he liked to, he liked Zingo's. And he would go wherever he was traveling from on his way back up north on the on the 99, and he would stop in the parking lot there next door, and they would fill up the bus, and he would go eat at Zingo's. So I, the first time I met Merle was sitting in a booth at Zingo's, uh, eating chicken fried steak, and uh, just and I and he would and every time I probably maybe 20, 30 times I've been on that tour bus, and every single time the first thing he would ask me is, "How's your mom and daddy?" Never met him. 
Never met them. But the first time I met, that was like, I'm like, dude, I got to thank my parents on this deal because they introduced me to your music. Uh, and we had like mutual friends and that stuff. And you know that guy and you know that. But he would always, how's your mom and daddy? They're good, doing good, Merle. Yep, yep. Well, he sold a lot of records, a whole lot of records. Oof. And and then in the last 10 or 15 years of his life, um, he was, uh, people recognized him for it in ways they hadn't before. Um, there was uh, uh, the uh, Kennedy uh, Lincoln Center uh, Awards, yeah, where he the got, Kennedy Center Awards. Yeah, where he got strip searched at the airport, by the way, by the <laughs> TSA. Uh, you know, the CMA Awards, the uh, Grammy Awards, uh, they all came in, in due course. Um, uh, so I, it's it's kind of gratifying to, to know that he was recognized uh, in ways that he deserved to be recognized. And, and unfortunately, and we'll see this now. There's going to be this outpouring of just love and admiration for Merle and his work. And now, ra and radio stations will finally play his songs. Um, well, now, I don't know about that. Well, they, well, I guess they will. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll have, they will now. Yeah. Uh, but seriously, if if you go through the what did he have? Forty one. Uh, top ten hits, and if you go, just I mean, it's it's, un it's unparalleled. Just a talent, uh, the way he went about using his uh, talent. He was just a remarkable guy, and one of the most stubborn people I ever met. And only Bob Mitchell could possibly show up uh, on the day with a, an extremely rare uh, Merle Haggard uh, poster. Such is the magic of uh, of uh, Bob Mitchell, who. Uh, we've been discussing this uh, this morning. Bob, how are you, brother? It's good to see you. Very good. It is. Uh, this is one of those. Uh, this is one of those times. Guys like us, w w have we ever had a conversation that Merle's name didn't come up? I don't think so. Uh, you know, especially when we're talking about. You music. need to get close to that microphone. These aren't the good ones you're used to broadcasting. Got gotcha. you. Um, I don't think so. You know, Bob and I, you and I, whenever we've talked about music, I, I think one of the things I'm always fond of saying. Uh, I said it last. I'm still catching my breath from up the two flights. Of stairs oh, you didn't here. take the elevator. I'm sorry. The, um, you know, Merle just belongs. You 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 made mention of this this morning. Uh, he belongs in a stratosphere. Not he he can't even be defined as just the greatest country music artist of all time, which he is. He is, yeah. And it, you can win that argument with very easily. He, he's up there with everybody. He's up there with Bach and Beethoven. Oh, sure. And Lennon and McCartney and everybody. Merle is that great. Yep. And uh, it's a very sad day, you know. It's a, it's kind of a, the inevitability of this. Right. Because uh, there, there are people close to Merle who uh, have been extremely concerned about this for a while now. And you try not to get caught up in all of that stuff, but there's a, there's a pretty good number of people who... Uh, uh, were aware that this was uh, that this was coming, and not not necessarily this soon. It was still a little bit of a surprise to everybody. Um, but you know, let's, we if you were, a year ago, we could the three of us would sit there and we all knew how this was gonna go. That Merle was gonna tour until he just couldn't anymore, and that was gonna be the end of it. Um, and he, I guarantee you, the last things he was worried about is, man, I don't, I, we got to make that show in Albuquerque, and we got to make that show in Salt Lake City. And that's how he was, man. Get on that bus, and let's get back out there on the road. And that's just, uh, that's how the guy operated. And you know what? He had a, think about this. He had 79 completely epic years. He left his mark in, on this world in a way that in, most artists could only dream of. Uh, how many people, regardless of what whatever your job is, get to be known immediately as the greatest of all time at what they did? Very few. I, I, I had this thought again this morning. You know, when I called you a little bit ago, what, 40 minutes ago, uh, I got a text from an artist asking, was it true? I hadn't heard. I got busy, didn't listen to the last hour of your show today. I was doing something else. And I called you immediately because I knew you would know. And it just kind of hit me hard. You know, they're yeah. all gone. Yeah, they're all gone, and and I have complimented Bob on this several times, so he knows what's coming. But the articles that were written years ago, and then that's now taken the form of a book that that you've been, you know that that is such a noble thing because they're all gone now, and 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 you got it collected when they were here, and they yeah, they barely. they knew about it, and and it's on the record and. Yeah. I, I can't tell you, you. You know how much I appreciate you doing that, and how noble of a of a thing that was. Yeah. Well, well I am just so honored um, and pleased that Merle had a chance to read the book, 
and um, and like the book. I mean, there's no greater greater compliment. I've got some uh, a little bit of information here that's coming in. That I think people will be interested in um, some of Merle's last last wishes uh, as far as his funeral. He, he wants to be cremated. He wants services within uh, within a week. Uh, and he's actually listed. He has a playlist of songs he wants performed. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he wants a couple of uh, Lefty Frizzell songs, uh, "I Love You a Thousand Ways," and no, another one I'll get to in a second here. Uh, he's looking forward to a performance of "Precious Memories" by Connie Smith, a performance of "Life's Railway to Heaven" by Ronnie Reno, a performance of "Silver Wings" by Marty Stewart and Connie Smith, uh, performances by Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson, "Song of Their Choice." Um, he has uh, listed his pallbearers, uh, including his son, Ben, and um, uh, his uh, brother-in-law, Jim Haggard, uh, his attorney, Rayburn Green, uh, among, among those uh, that he's selected. But he had the time to sit down and map this stuff out, and, and that's kind of a blessing to be able to do that. I was just, when you mentioned Lefty Frizzell, I, I always love talking about Lefty being, you know, one of the grandfathers and, you know, we, we all term it differently, but one of the foundation artists of the Bakersfield sound. Buck loved Lefty Frizzell, Merle did, and uh, I have a little Bakersfield sound tour that I do for artists that I've worked with and they come through town and stuff, and, and one of the stops we do is the old Basque, now the Basque Club, which was the Rainbow Gardens. And in both of Merle's books, he tells stories about standing up on crates and things and looking. Yeah, on his in the bicycle, window. watching yeah. through the window, watching, watching Bob Wills and the Texas yeah. Playboys. Yeah. And, and Lefty. And then that's the Rainbow Gardens, was the famous story about where Merle opened a Lefty Frizzell show impersonating Lefty. Yeah. Behind Lefty's band, you know, which used to be a big deal for Merle too, is he did a he did a lot of really good impressions of other artists, but he had Lefty Frizzell down cold. Clearly, he spent a lot of time listening to Long White you, Veil. You Long. you've heard the live in Philadelphia album? Oh right? yeah, no, oh, he does all the impressions on it. Yeah, he does Buck and Johnny Cash and all that, and it's they're as good as any. Yeah, but he ever. wouldn't like play Long Black Veil in concert. He wouldn't do it. He knew it yeah. backwards and forwards. But he, Merle had a respect and a reverence for other artists and their work. That most people wouldn't have. If you're as great as Myrtle, you don't have to respect anybody else's work. But this, he had this kind of a funny little dust up with Bob Dylan uh, uh, recently, which at the, if you spend any time with Myrtle at all and just listen to how he talks about stuff, I knew as soon as I heard that that the, that this was kind of a tongue in cheek thing that he had with this bit with uh, Bob Dylan and songwriting. But that's just that's just the way the guy was. He had immense yeah. respect for other people's work. I thought Merle handled that with great diplomacy and class. Our, all three of our heads could explode spontaneously trying to figure out all of Bob Dylan's quotes and comments. You're, yeah. so, you're so right about that. I thought the same thing, that Merle handled, handled that really, really well. Which and I, but he handled pretty much and he had like problems with like what was the big uh, uh, music award show that he went to that last big one that he did boy we got a lot of behind the scenes stories on that didn't want to go didn't want to have anything to do with it but it was the right thing to do and he went and he was all super classy about it and that's just that's the way Merle was man hey a couple more things I want to throw out real real quick uh, uh, lest people get the wrong idea Noel and Marty Haggard are also going to be uh, pallbearers. And none of those performers are confirmed yet. Those are Merle's wishes. Uh, I'm sure most of them will do their very best to, to do it, but those are just Merle's wishes. So I thought I'd throw that well, out. Well, I'm glad he got to do it his way. It's 